Spit Studios in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. This is the Spit Sports Show. I am your host, Elijah Ford. And holy moly, my town is buzzing. The Vancouver Canucks take game one over the Edmonton Oilers 5-4. to four. Now, I have a bunch of thoughts on this game, some insight on how the series could move forward. My thoughts, my positives, my negatives, because there were uh, many of them on this game, but I gotta be honest, for that first 20 minutes of the game, I know some people in the media, especially the Ron McLean and Kevin BX and all those guys, they were talking about how, you know, they didn't think the Canucks played all that bad. They had some high quality chances. They obviously had that Garland breakaway, but to be honest with you, I didn't like anything I saw. Well, first of all, the game itself could not have started worse. Like the first period game one, we get a too many men penalty 50 seconds into the game or somewhere around there. And Listen, I hate to call one guy out because there is 10 guys on the ice at a time and one guy has impact, but not as much as the whole team would. So it's, you know, it's usually pretty harsh to just harp on one guy for the majority of your team's issues. But listen, man, I have to say what I see and Ian Cole had one of the worst first periods I've ever seen a player have. It was c- comparable to Lucas Spies's game five third period against the Capitals in 2018, if you guys remember. he He's the one who took the penalty for that um, too many men. It was his fault. He was the guy coming on. You have to see the situation. Color commentator, I'm sorry I forget his name. He's the Toronto Maple Leafs color commentator. I don't really watch a whole lot of... I don't want a lot watch a whole lot of Leafs hockey, so I don't know his name. But he did a great job at explaining why it was Ian Cole's fault. And of course, the Oilers, like they do, perfect pass across the ice to guess who? Zach Hyman for his ridiculous ninth goal of the playoffs. And the Oilers go up one nothing. And listen, again, I don't I don't want to harp on one guy. I like Unless I have to, and I feel like I have to. The Canucks had, in my opinion, one really good offensive zone possession during that first period. They had it in that zone for about a minute 20. And how does that possession end? Puck comes back to Ian Cole. He can't quite handle it. It comes out of the zone. We have to regroup, send it back in. The Oilers get the puck back, and they're back in our zone. Like, it was just a bad play. And then on that second goal, it was easily the most obvious of the errors that he made. That giveaway was brutal. Listen, first of all, I don't know why you're passing the puck behind your net to begin with. But even if you are bound to make that more than questionable decision, you better be darn well sure that somebody is there for it. Turns out somebody was there for it. He just happened to be wearing a white jersey instead of a blue jersey. Puck goes back to Ekholm. He rips it home. A Sivos. I didn't think his glove positioning was very good, to be honest with you, on that goal. But I don't think he saw it. Puck goes in. Two cob oilers. It is what it is. Now listen. During that first period, I couldn't find the puck possession stats for period by period. But I know the shots were 10 to 5 in the first. And it didn't really feel that close to me. I thought the Oilers were in complete control because the Canucks were so passive. It's unbelievable the amount of respect it looks like they had for the Oilers after going 4-0 against them in the regular season. They were just sitting back, letting McDavid wheel around the outside, and the Oilers will kill you when they do that because they do these set give-and-go plays and these drop passes, and anytime you double-team one of them, the other's breaking off for a cross-ice pass like... They are so good when you're passive. You have to get on them. You have to be physical. And that's what they started doing in the second period where they came out buzzing. Thank the Lord. 53 seconds in, Ian Cole with the single most Ian Cole assist I've ever seen in my life. Misses the net horribly to the right. Somehow bounces off the boards perfectly to Dakota Joshua's stick. Goal 2-1 Canucks. And we've got some life. Now listen. Do I give Ian Cole any credit for that assist after he'd screwed the pooch for, in in my opinion, the first two goals? Absolutely not. I'm sorry. Listen, I can't give somebody credit for wildly missing the net, and it just turns out to, 
I don't know. It's just a lucky bounce, man. Like I can't really give him much credit for that. But God bless him. It's a goal. And after that goal happened, I thought they took complete control of the game in nearly every facet. I thought their neutral zone was better. I thought they put way more pressure on the Oilers. I thought their four check was great. I thought Miller and Besser were unbelievable on defense, but it was especially noticeable in the last two periods, especially their defense on McDavid. It seemed like they always had an eye on him. And clearly the results were there. McDavid was held without a shot which is just unfathomable to think about considering the te defensive team that the Canucks have been throughout the season held without a shot for the first time in his playoff career. He had one secondary assist on that Nugent Hopkins to Hyman goal where he did really nothing. And now listen, here we go again. The Canucks have all of the momentum in the world. We are absolutely flying around the ice. And I... I don't want to mention this guy again, but I have no choice. Like Ian Cole with an awkward pinch where somehow he ends up throwing it to Ryan Nugent Hopkins stick, who gives a nice little quick drop pass to Derek Ryan, who enters the zone with speed. They get a clear offensive zone entry. Puck goes back to Cody CC of all people. And the puck goes off of guess who Ian Cole and it's 3-1 Oilers. And those kind of goals, like, they're just so deflating. Just completely against the flow of the game. You feel like, you know, you've just gotten within one. You're dominating the game. And just Cody Cece rips one in off Ian Cole's body. And it's just like, there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? It's hard as a team to see that happen after what I thought was 10 plus minutes of really, really good work. And then 50 seconds after that, it's just the most what the heck goal you can imagine. Like Zach Hyman coming on his off wing, his stick hits Myers' stick. It doesn't hit the puck and somehow it goes underneath Sivos' stick and goes in between his legs. Like it's just those two goals coming back to back, man. Like I said, it's so deflating. You were just dominating for like 10 minutes. And then they come back and just score two flukes. So you're down 4-1. And listen, I want to give a quick shout out to Rick Tockett for keeping Sivos in. I thought that was a great decision. I thought it was the right move. I know everybody in Vancouver was probably calling for them to pull the goalie at that point. I didn't think so. Sivos is a young goalie, man. And goalies in general, but especially young goalies, to say confidence is huge would be maybe the world's greatest understatement. Confidence is everything. And once you lose that as a goaltender, you can slide real, real quick. And we need Sivos to play well until Demko comes back, which looks like it won't be until game five at the earliest. Now, again, credit to Talkit and credit to the Canucks in general. They played some resilient hockey. As soon as that goal was scored, it didn't matter. They were right back on the Oilers like they were before that 53 second period. And like they were buzzing again. And they got rewarded for it. They got a admittedly lucky goal. But listen, am I going to apologize for it? Kiss my you know what? Like the you guys, I'm not, I don't want to say you guys. Oilers scored two, what can only be described as not pretty goals. And we got one right back. And listen, they just continued that momentum into the third. It didn't seem like the Oilers could get a really clean breakout. I thought our four check was unbelievable, especially from Connor Garland, who I'm going to talk about in a little bit here. But all three Canucks goals in the third period, I think came from three of the top five Canucks all playoff run. Maybe the top three if Dakota Joshua wasn't didn't score in the first period instead of the third. But listen, Miller, who's been just unreal all playoffs, I think he's been our best all-around player. Whenever he has the puck on his stick, I feel confident. Just a gross Sidney Crosby-esque tip. Like, the, the fact that he could raise that up so quickly and yet just put it right over, oh, right over the pad. It was nice. It was a nice tip. Great play. And then... Zadorov just with an absolute blast. But if you're an Oilers fan, that's the one you probably want Stuart Skinner to have, if I'm being honest. Now, listen, it was perfectly placed. And again, one of the top five players for the Canucks easily this playoff run. I think Zadorov has been unbelievable. Not just while the play is on, mind you, he, where he has been 
probably our best defenseman. But even after the plays, in the scrums and stuff like that, early on, he went up against Evander Kane. And Evander Kane didn't make a noise for the rest of the game because he knew he ain't doing anything against that big Russian bear. All right. So Zadorov with a perfectly placed shot. Listen, you want Skinner to have it, but it happens. And then 28 seconds later, like, it just seemed like the Canucks got rewarded for all the work they had put in before these goals had happened. The 40 minutes of just, I think, perfect hockey they had played, or at least close to it. Garland Gretzky makes an appearance 28 seconds later, baby. Now, I, I swear, as soon as he scored that goal, like, I don't know if you guys have looked up Wayne Gretzky highlights before. If you haven't, don't because they're some of the most boring you'll ever see in your life. But if you do, you'll notice either it's a slap shot off the wing or a fake slap shot off the wing, and he goes five-hole. And that's exactly what Garland did. Now, when he faked the slap shot and started skating, I thought he was going to go for the wraparound initially because Skinner, he was decently far out of his net. I think Garland might have been able to beat him to that spot, but instead he feeds it through his legs. Again, Oilers fans, you probably want Skinner to have that puck and listen, I totally understand, but he put that in a, again, just a perfect spot and it goes in the net. Um, and to say, I wish I would have, I was in that arena when that happened. Oh my goodness gracious. I could have gotten tickets for 350 bucks. I could have, but it wasn't in the cards, you know, gotta be smart. And listen, the Canucks win five to four and four. I thought four of the five goals the Canucks scored were from four of their top five playoff uh, playoff players throughout this run. Joshua Garland, Miller, Zadorov. That's four of your top five. That fifth spot could probably rounded out by Brock Besser, Quinn Hughes. There's been a couple guys who are fighting for that fifth spot before the five. And you have to wonder after that horn sounded and the Oilers went down one Oh, are the Canucks in the Oilers ahead? Because, listen, they started off the season against them with a 7-1 win, where which I, sent the Oilers spiraling down into a pit of the bottom of the league, which, admittedly, they were able to recover from. Good for them. But they're now 0-5 against this Canucks team this year. It's just kind of a tough matchup for them because not only do they match them in star power, the Canucks do, but the Canucks stars have, are pretty two-way. They definitely have been these playoffs, especially Besser, who a buddy was saying this to me, like if you would have told me Brock Besser was going to be on the ice in the last minute to win a playoff game against the Oilers, like you, I would have told you you're lying to me. And I would have said the same thing. But he's gotten his act together on the other side of the ice, man. He's a lot more aware than he has been in years past. Are the Canucks in the Oilers' head now? We'll see after game two. I think if the Canucks definitely... If the Canucks can take one in the Oilers building, then I think they win the series. But I think if they win the next game at Rogers Arena, go to the Rogers Center, lose both of them, I think the Oilers are obviously right back in the series. But I think even if the Canucks lose, go 1-1, go to Rogers Center, win game three, I think that's going to be tough for the Oilers to recover from. Now, I will give some Canucks objectivity. Now, McDavid will never play that bad again. I, I saw him have one bad game against the Kings, and then I saw him pull off 11 assists. Like, it happens. Uh, 11 assists, assists in four games or something silly like that. And the Oilers do not seem at all concerned about Dreisaitl's injury, which, you know, I never pray for anyone to be hurt. I hope both teams are healthy. But as a Canucks fan, you were probably hurt, hoping it would be a little worse than cramps, like they're saying, which... I don't know if like I don't know if they're lying or not. Hockey isn't like football really where you have to be specific about what injury they have if they're going to play. There's a lot of mysterious injuries in hockey, so I don't know. But it all signs point to he'll be fine for game 2 and Stuart Skinner to his credit has been awesome at bouncing back from terrible games and this was objectively a bad performance for him then. So this series is going to be nip and tuck like everyone I think thought it was going to be coming in. I like I, I said coming into this series, my head said Oilers in six. My heart said Nux in seven. I hope my heart wins. I feel the same way. My head still says I think the Oilers will recover from this and probably win tomorrow or on uh, Friday, tomorrow night. Probably take another one in their house, win Vancouver game five, win in Edmonton game six. My heart says 
Vancouver takes this thing in seven, maybe six. And listen, I think my heart is starting to become more right than my head. It's definitely, my head is definitely a lot more Canucks leaning than it was coming into this series, let me tell you. Because that 40 minutes from the Vancouver Canucks, listen, you can say Edmonton played poorly as much as you want, but that's some darn near perfect playoff hockey being played from three lines. And the D stepped up. Shout out Heronic as well. I thought he had one of his better games in the playoffs. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We just reached over 220 subscribers. Big things happening on this show. Leave a like if you enjoyed what you saw today. Please let me know in the comments below. What do you think is going to happen the rest of the series? What's your prediction? Which team and how many games? I am small enough as to where I can read all comments, and I love doing that. I love replying to you guys talking sports. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for the support. Peace out.